here, we're out in Wellston, Oklahoma, off of Route 66 at the Butcher Barbecue Stand. We're gonna hang out with the pit master himself and see what it's all about at some of Oklahoma's best barbecue. I'm here with Levi Vosca, owner, operator, pit master, the smoky barbecue meat guy, and we are in the back where the magic happens. People don't get to see this part, so we're really excited to be back here. Right, yeah. All right, tell us a day in the life. How does this happen? So, usually start about three in the morning. That's early. Yeah, uh, you get used to it after a while. Uh, so, uh, me and one other guy usually gets here at three in the morning. We'll fire the smokers up. Uh, we start putting ribs in, uh, start bringing the ribs out, opening the ribs, trimming ribs. Then we start putting the rub on the ribs. And then we have three different smokers here. So, they're Cook Shaft FEC 750s. Cool. This is a 500, so that means they own, hold 750 pounds of meat in both of these, and this one will hold 500 pounds of meat. And we um, have a system, right? Right, This yeah. is the... So early, early morning, we use these two for ribs, mm -hmm. and then this smoker is used just for chicken, turkey, and pork. Okay. Tell us a little bit about your seasonings. Uh, so they're all proprietarily made for us. Uh, my dad actually owns Butcher Barbecue, so he started making the rubs and everything. He started creating those. Oh, probably 2007, 2008, he created Butcher Barbecue itself, the company, oh, wow. and uh, started making his own rubs. He was using other people's rubs and injections and stuff like that, and he decided, like, well, I'll just do this myself to create my own, and then it, people were like, what are you winning with? What are you winning with? And so he's like, well, I'm winning with this, and then I remember him making just his own little shaker bottles and handing them out to guys, writing on them what they were, and just kind of grew into that and that and that, and that. that's kind of where the brand was born, was through the competition barbecue and then plus him making his own rubs and injections and stuff. So we use all that here. Okay. Yep. Very cool. Do you sell it too? Absolutely. Yeah, we sell it right up front. Yep. Very cool. So have you always grown up in a, what, when did you become a barbecue family? Uh, I was five, 1995. My grandparents bought Pioneer Camp Barbecue, mm -hmm. which is on the same lot as here. Um, I actually grew up with them and so I remember my grandpa teaching me how to stoke fires and when to put wood in and not put wood in because it was an old school uh, brick offset and then they ended up getting an actual offset smoker which is your typical what you think of a smoker when you think of a smoker the big barrel yeah and so I remember all that going on and growing up charcoaling and everything with him and my dad and everything and so it's just kind of that's awesome it's growing into well this. your kids are almost that age you're about yeah, to have right, some yeah. free employees absolutely yeah <laughs> right i can't wait i was gonna have a whole crew but i was like now nah, we'll stop at two <laughs> that's awesome what do we want to feature back here do you want to show anything while we're back um here? so this is kind of our like our pride deal so uh burn ins so we do things a little different here than most barbecue places we separate our briskets uh we separate our flats and our points so the points are the fatty end of the brisket, the decal part of the brisket. And so that's what all the burn ends are made, made from. It's all that internal fat. And so we separate them and cook them completely different than we do the briskets in two different smokers. It has its own process. And so he's just trimming those up right now to get ready it. for tomorrow. So I mean, burnt ends, I, my understanding is it's always kind of, you only have one set amount, but I love that you all have an intention behind it. It has its own process. You yep. get the meat separately, so you yep. can kind of control that. Yeah, it's uh, it's mildly fickle, and so it, it needs a little bit more intention to be able to do the process that we do. And so we uh, we treat it with its own little specialty. <laughs> Are the burn ends the first thing to sell out? Uh, not necessarily. It's really kind of crazy and depends on the day and like, how people are ordering food, literally. Some days we'll have crazy brisket days, and some days it's rib days, some days it's burn ins. What kind of day do you think it'll be today? Uh, hopefully a good day. Yeah? <laughs> Great answer. <laughs> All right, Levi, so there's still over an hour until showtime. Yeah. You always open promptly at 11, correct? Yep. Yep. No early serving. No early serving. There's an opening ceremony we there can't is. wait to see. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, we started that about two or three years ago once we got everything in clothes. So we have a hype guy who comes out and yells at everybody and tells them what's going on. He has some really fun spiels and stuff. And so it's kind of like that. it's the uh, airplane kind of deal. You know what you I mean? You need a big gong. Right, yeah. <laughs> Starting. All right, so tell us about how the ordering process works here. Right, so I unlock the doors at 9 a.m. So if you get here really early, uh, you don't have to wait in your car or anything. You can come inside. Like these guys, they got, got here pretty early this morning. You can come in, have a seat. We'll get you a drink, a beer, anything like that while you wait. Uh, and then you just wait in line. And then Cooper's up here, and he'll take your order as fast as possible. 
and then uh, your food comes out of this window right here. He'll just slide the ticket and usually it's less than a couple minutes. So the wait's usually in line, it's not on the food. Awesome. Yep. Yeah, I know once you get to the counter, you're to the window like that. Well, so pro tip for those of you who don't know, if you're in line and all you need is a nice cold beverage, yes. you can just walk up to the beer counter. Yep. And we got, we call them beer gaps. There's beer gaps in the in line uh, right here that you can just cut through, go over, grab a cold brewski, get back in line and make some friends. We know you also have a beer collaboration. Yeah. Tell us a little bit yeah. about that. So we have a, we call it Cold English. It's with Stone Cloud and we made a blue corn maize uh, malt liquor. It's a, our take on an OE. Okay. Yep. Awesome. We'll have to drink one of those. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Good morning, carnivores! How y'all doing today? All right, first and foremost, we always want to make sure we thank each and every one of you for coming and spending the day with us. Without customers like y'all, we don't have a reason to be here, so thank you very much for supporting a small business. Give yourself a round of applause for that. That being said, my name is James. Some people call me Irish. Some people call me Reverend. Do not call me late for barbecue. Yeah. He knows. If you're an adult and you like an adult beverage, we have several gaps throughout the railing. Feel free to cut the line. Go see Jay in the corner. He'll get you a nice cold beer. We're all adults. You'll get your place back in line. Cooper's going to take your order. He's going to try and get through that line as fast as possible. James is going to be calling your name out the window if you have a to-go order and you need any extra sauce. We do have our regular and our spicy Chipotle pre-packaged. Just let him know he can add that to your bag. If you do want any of our other signature series sauces over here, I got some to-go cups with lids. That being said, I know you guys are hungry. I can hear those stomachs rumbling. The ribs have been rubbed. The mac has been cheesed and the coal has been slawed. The butcher barbecue stand is now open. <laughs> nothing like beer and barbecue in the yeah, morning, right? Absolutely. All right, let's talk about what we have here. We have to know the story behind okay. the Twinkies. Okay, so whenever I went to open this place, I was actually gonna do Rice Krispie Treats. And I was driving home one day and I was like, oh, Twinkies, individually wrapped Twinkies. Like everybody loves Twinkies, like who doesn't love Twinkies? And yeah. so it was just one of those kind of deals, like I'm not gonna try and make pies and banana pudding and everybody's doing that. And so it's kind of funny, we used to get a lot of hate for it, like we're really only Twinkies, but now it's kind of our staple. Like people get mad that they don't get Twinkies. <laughs> and then it's also cool too, like, cause when people take pictures of food of our tray and I see it on the internet, people automatically know where they're at mm -hmm. just because of the Twinkies. So it's just something cool. Yeah, it's your signature. Yeah. I love it. All right, give us kind of a rundown of what Oklahoma barbecue is. Uh, Oklahoma barbecue to me is, is we just kind of take the best of everything and make make it better. So it's just kind of like a, we take a little Texas, we take a little Kansas City, we take a little Memphis, and then we kind of marry it all together and we make our own style. And I think that we get left behind. We're not even in the conversation a lot of the time. And so that was my main goal opening this place was that we need to be in the conversation and in the run of also when you start naming greats, they need to put us in, in the pile. Well, you've definitely made your mark. I tried. <laughs> <clears throat> Let's talk about these beans. Okay. Apple so, pie, apple barbecue, pie, barbecue beans. Baked so beans. my dad made these. Can you see that? Every Thanksgiving and Christmas and stuff like that. And so when I opened this place up, I was like, hey man, you know you're gonna have to forfeit the recipe finally, right? I was like, everybody's gonna, gonna to try this. Yep. And I remember remembering him handing me this recipe for like two little cans of beans and like a half a dill of apple pie filling. Mm -hmm. And now we make 65 gallons at a time. And so I had to do like the reverse engineering math of like trying oh to figure out how many, how many gallons of apple pie filling and stuff to buy to make it. But it's just one of those things that, it was a staple in my household and it was one of those things I thought everybody would really like and enjoy and it made it another unique thing, so. I mean, between the Twinkies, the apple pie, barbecue beans, but yours is unique, it's one of a kind. I try. And that's how people know. Yep, absolutely. And then also, <laughs> you got the beer. Can't go wrong with that. Burnt ends look amazing today. Oh, Thank tell you. us about the sausages you make. You do a couple different kinds, yep. right? So we, uh, we have a jalapeno cheese sausage, and then we have our version of a hot link. And then okay. we actually, so our normal sausage is actually a recipe of mine that it's a bratwurst with a heavy black pepper in it. So it's actually mm. a brat. Um, kielbasa, brat, 
mixture. It's not even, it's not one thing, it's not really another thing either, so. Uh, but yeah, we have a, a Walkies up in Claremore, Oklahoma, make all our sausage for us. So, if you're gonna eat something on this plate, what's the first thing you would eat? Man, if it's my first time here, probably ribs or burn ins. Uh, but one of my favorite things is the chicken. Uh, I love the, the half chickens that we're doing now. The chicken yep. is beautiful. Yep. We were just talking about this. You guys. So we do a two-stage rub on it. Uh, it's our honey rub and our grilling addiction. Your award-winning award honey, honey best rub. Award-winning, best planet, best on the planet. Uh, and then we mop it uh, about three quarters way through the smoke process and then put it back on the smoker. Okay. To try and set the sauce on it. But that's really the only thing we sauce is just the chicken. Everything, everything else, else is rubs. Everything else is just rubs, yep. Okay, burnt ends. How did the burnt ends get so famous here? So. It's something that Oklahoma wasn't doing at all. Uh, it's mm -hmm. a Kansas City style thing, and Kansas oh City gosh. doesn't even really do it this way. Kansas is more like they cube it up, they they cook it, cube it up, and they put it in a pan of sauce, and then they, they reset the burn ins on the sauce. And so when I did it, I was like, well, I think that the beef flavor and the fat and everything is more important than like this candy style. I, we, I feel like we could have created this meat candy style without the sauce. Mm -hmm. And so. I was probably uh, two years in, and somebody came and asked for burn-ins one day, and I was like, yeah, we can do them. And so I, I started doing them, and then it caught fire, and then it's literally probably the most famous thing we do is the burn-ins. Burn-ins and ribs, for sure. I mean, for me, that is the go-to. Absolutely. You gotta get meat locker, a pound of burn-ins. Yes. <laughs> even if I'm driving by and you are open, yep. a pound of burn-ins. Yes. Eat it in the car as you're driving back to the Absolutely. city. Absolutely. We have guys that get the nachos and they'll still put burn-ins on the nachos. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that, you guys, that's a hack. The red Mexican nachos yep. with burnt ends. Yep. I can't believe you're Secret holding menu. out. Yeah, yeah, you did not tell me about that. <laughs> Let's talk about these ribs. Okay. Also, your award-winning seasoning on here. Yes, yeah, so uh, the ribs are just our honey rub. And then after, depending on time and what temps they're at, uh, they get wrapped in uh, brown sugar and a syrup. Oh my gosh and then they go back in the smoker wrap, and then you guys gotta see them coming out. So we wait until they're above 211 degrees and we pull them for that fall apart kind of feel. They're definitely fall apart. Yeah, I'm basic. Burn ends and ribs. Yeah, no, you can't go wrong. And beer. Cause it's sweet and then it's this natural, like fatty, smoky kind of thing. And then they just, they're married together. They're supposed to be together. You make all of your sides here. Yep. What's the most popular side? The beans, sides, the beans, for sure, yeah. The beans, beans all day. Beans all day. Yep. The pickles and stuff, they take, we usually try and do those like in a two week out process just so they pickle really well. Okay. Yeah, for me, you have to have that vinegary, pickly bite with yeah, the vinegar. It's like a palate cleanser. Absolutely, yeah. It's, a, it's an acidic thing where it helps kill the fat and then you can, a lot of people, take bites in between just to kind of clean the palate a little bit. Because mm -hmm. everything is really rich and fatty. And... Well, Levi, thank you so much for having us out here today, getting an insider's look at everything that's about the Butcher Barbecue <laughs> yeah. stand. Um, Cheers. Call it a wrap. All Cheers. Right. Brian Yoon, General Manager of Gangnam Korean Barbecue. And today, he's gonna walk us through how you Korean barbecue in Oklahoma. Hey Brian, how's it going today? Good, how are you? Awesome, we are so excited yeah. to get to be guided through this process by a pro. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for coming and thanks for making this time an opportunity. Um, I do wanna jump into the barbecue. Yeah, since let's we're jump all right hungry. into it. Awesome. Yeah, so I do want to let everybody know how, like, what's the expectation with the Korean barbecue, okay? So we, Koreans, <laughs> we like to do, like, a marinated stuff first, and then the marinated stuff, and after that, we like to do the spicy. Okay. And after our spicy marinated ones, we do seafood, like shrimps. So that you're going to start kind of heavy, finish off light? Yes. Well, okay. the main point of that is to save the grill. Okay. Now, it's really hard for us to clean the grill every single day. We got to scrape it off and everything. So it's for that. And a long time ago, when people did a Korean barbecue in Korea, they were trying to save as much as grill as possible, too. So in that way, we can save because of the spicy stuff. 
that just burns the grill. That makes sense. So, I mean, there is a technique and an art to yeah. Korean barbecue. Mm -hmm. And for a lot of folks who aren't that familiar, when you come here, Gangnam is all you can eat. Yep. So you have 90 minutes to plow through as much of the menu and hit all your favorite things as many times as you want to. Mm -hmm. um, for first timers, it might be a little bit intimidating, yeah. but your server is gonna be your biggest asset. So don't hesitate to ask for help. Lucky us, we're being guided by the pro today, so we're mm -hmm. gonna dig right in. All right, thank you. What all kind right. of meat is this again? This is the brisket. Uh, it's the most, one of the most popular meats that we have. And all the Koreans, I, actually everybody likes to start with the brisket. Um, one of the good th pros about brisket is like it Yum. cooks fast. That's why a lot of people try to start with the brisket first because everybody's hungry and you get to eat it pretty quick. I love it. If you all could smell this, yeah, it's amazing. And see that sizzle. So the brisket is sliced really thin, nice marbling, and it goes on the grill and it takes two seconds. Yeah, as you can see, um, it's oh, one side is already cooked, so all you need to do is just flip them. Okay. A lot of people don't like to like flip them. They just kind of like you know, scramble around and until they cook. But I like to make everything kind of pretty, yeah. so I'm just gonna flip them lightly. I like the pretty style, yeah. but I think how I operate is I'm the, just stir it around. Yeah, that's Ooh, more convenient. Let's tell them about uh, the tongs etiquette. Yeah, so with the tong, you just, I mean, it's kind of the same way as you guys do it at home. Just try not to burn yourself too much. Try not to go in the middle of it. Um, just kind of push the meats around. That would be the best way. And with beef, you can move it around and everything. With the steaks and thicker meats, you might want to just put it on and leave it for like a minute or two. Okay. So one side is perfectly cooked and all you need to do is just flip them. And that way uh, it can be still moisture and um, it will be nice, medium rare. So basically you want to let the grill do the work. Yes. So yeah. let the grill do what it's here for, which is be really hot mm -hmm. and to cook your delicious food. And then with the tongs, it's another tool. Oftentimes, you'll have multiple tongs here. Um, you'll kind of cook through one thing at a time, but it's nice to designate what like the raw tongs and the finished tongs are, depending on when you start mixing your proteins too. Yes. And again, we're lucky, Brian is the dedicated chef, <laughs> but I know when I go with our group of friends, we always have to designate you are the starting off cooking until my arm gets too tired and yeah. then I'm passing it on to somebody else. Yes. Yeah. So while it's interactive, it's nice to have a strategy in place. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, you, a lot of people burn their meat. Um, they make, they cook their meat really dry and they complain to us, the meat is too dry and yeah. everything. <laughs> but most of the times, uh, it really depends on how you cook it. Okay, uh, make sure the grill is hot before you put the meat on. Okay, and after you put the meat on, just let the grill do its Awesome. Yeah. You, well, that looks mm -hmm. beautiful. Yeah, it smells cooked, so good. So, lady spoons. Thank you. you. Thank you. And brisket goes very well with the our sauces over here. So we got soybean paste over here. We call it samja. Okay. And sweet chili sauce with pineapple juice, salt and pepper with sesame oil. And the brisket goes. Uh, really well with the sesame oil one and the soybean paste. Okay. Okay. Can't wait to dig in. Yeah. Oh, so let's kind of talk about the table setup. Yeah. Obviously, the big hot thing in the middle is the grill. Yeah. Um, and then everybody has their in individual plates. Everybody has their individual sauces because yep. we know preferences differ. But talk is, talk about all these things, the side shareables, yeah. the banchan. Yeah, so the banchan is our side dishes. Um, so we got this cucumber kimchi and regular kimchi, and pickled onions and jalapenos. And this is fish cake stir fry, and pickled radish. And we got ginger salad, lettuce wraps, garlic, and jalapenos. For the lettuce wraps, jalapeno, and garlic, we don't usually bring it out in the beginning, unless it's like uh, we're facing uh, like a reg regular customers. Um, when the customers ask for it, we then we bring it out. Got it. Yeah, that's one of our- And these are for cooking, right? Yes. yes. A lot of. These are for snacking, mm -hmm. the banchan, and yeah. then the garlic and the jalapenos for cooking, and then the lettuce. Um, I'm a big lettuce wrap person, yes. so putting all the proteins in the lettuce, dipping in the sauces, and then just taking a big bite. Yeah. So a lot of people like this, and this one, and this one, these are the best three. 
Um, so what I like to do with the brisket, I like to put the one cucumber on top of the brisket, a little bit of sauce, and just eat it like that. That's my personal preference, but a lot of people love the wraps. So, shush. Yeah, show us how you put it on a wrap. Yeah, so, same thing, you can just put the meat, a little bit of panchan, like uh, cucumber, and maybe one of the onions, a little bit of sauce, rice if you like, but I'm on a diet. So, I'm just gonna eat like We're going this. low carb today. Oh, low carb, yeah. okay, gotcha. <laughs> and that's how you eat it. Awesome. So I don't know if it's growing up Asian, but I love any food that you wrap in a piece of fresh lettuce. It gives you that crunch. Um, we grew up eating egg rolls wrapped in lettuce, bun sale wrapped in lettuce, mm. anything you can wrap in lettuce, it feels so much healthier too. Mm -hmm. Okay, I can't wait to try. I'm just gonna dig in and try a piece of this brisket. Can you see it? It's amazing. The sesame oil, salt and pepper is so simple. Mm -hmm. That's so good. And it's so simple to make it um, at home as well. Just literally pepper, sesame, and a little bit of sauce, uh, sesame oil. Okay, awesome. Yeah. So um, we went through sliced brisket. What's next? Next one is another thin one because uh, for all the hungry people, because we don't like the meats cooking too for too long. So this is thin pork belly. In Korea, we call it tepe sangyopsar. And this one also cooks well. But like I said before, we just need to let the grill do its work. Whenever you guys are uh, put the meat on the grill and try to flip it right away, as you can see, it's stuck. stuck. Yeah, it's stuck on the grill. We don't want that. And you can prevent that by just leaving it alone and until the other side is cooking. Okay. So it's like regular grilling. Yeah. Don't touch mm -hmm. the meat until you need to touch the meat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's another one that I want to do it with the thin pork belly is the regular pork belly. Now, this and the brisket goes battling all the time. Um, it's most popular ones on the menu too. And here's a pro tip for the pork belly. What I like to do is putting the kimchi, one of the sides on the grill. Ooh. Now, a lot of people know about this. When you cook the kimchi, it just, it get rid of all that fishiness smell and the taste in the kimchi. And it just, it just, it works really well with the pork belly. A lot of Korean people love eating fried kimchi with the pork belly. And that goes well with the wraps as well. Oh my gosh, that is a great pro tip. I didn't even know that. Yeah. And a little bit of garlic as well. Um, if you think the garlic smell is too strong for you or it tastes too strong, you can grill it and it won't be spicy or it won't mm -hmm. smell bad. It will just taste really good with the pork belly and kimchi. The grill looks beautiful right now. <laughs> yeah, so there's another uh, pro tip. Um, just because you're cooking one meat doesn't have to be, you don't have to keep that meat on the grill. You can literally put almost everything on the grill. Okay. Now, with our grill, we use gas for the fire uh, to heat up the food. Uh, so the main point with putting a lot of meats in the grill, don't cover all the hose on the grill. That will just you kill the gas. air circulation. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yeah, that will just kill the gas and a lot of people will complain about, my fire is too weak. Well, you put the, a lot of meats and you're covering all the holes, it will just kill the gas and it won't cook fast. Oh, and this is another pro tip. Oh my tip. gosh, that looks so good. Yeah, with your one of your salt, the sesame oil one, you can grab this little bit of sesame oil, little pepper, salt, and you can put it on kimchi. That will make the kimchi cook a little bit faster because of the oil. And it just tastes so much better with the sesame oil when you're cooking things with sesame oil. Yeah, sesame oil smells. is the perfect finish. I can already smell that. And pork belly, you can literally check it, like flip them. And if it's like still, uh, if it's crispy, you can turn it around, okay. uh, you can flip it. And if it's not crispy, you can still see like a little red marks and whatnot. Just leave it alone for a few more minutes or a few seconds. But uh, it's almost ready. When we eat Korean barbecue, um, I like to go with at least four people. So you try all the different things and cook for everybody. Right. Yeah. That's why I like going to Korean barbecue with my friends. I mean, love bringing new people. It's just really cool. To, uh, you get to cook your own barbecue <clears throat> and you get to order as much as you want. So 
So this is something people may not be familiar with, having scissors um, while you eat. It is for sure a very big Asian thing. Yeah. And basically having the scissors allows you to cut up the larger pieces of meat. Um, my favorite is when you go eat pho or go to a noodle shop and you yeah. see the Asian mom pull scissors out of her diaper bag <laughs> yes. to cut the noodles up for the yeah. little kid. Mm -hmm. So we grew up with scissors in the kitchen. So I love seeing it at the dining room table with Korean barbecue. Right. Um, that way you can chop it down to however you need it. Right. All right. Everything looks pretty good. Maybe a little bit longer for the maybe one, one minute or two for the pork belly, but the pork belly is ready. And the garlic and kimchi, they're also ready. So then pork, then belly. pork belly is ready. Yeah. And you guys can always ask the, uh, your server about like an empty plate so you guys can put the meat on. If you, you can keep it on the grill. It's just, it's going to burn a little bit later if you don't eat it in time. So. And Brian, this is valuable real estate. Yeah. If the food's sitting on the grill, it's not cooking more food. Yeah. <laughs> I think what we've learned coming in big groups is sometimes you can eat way faster than you can cook. Right, yeah. That's why I like the big parties, they usually get, um, what do you say, like two grills. Uh -huh. And we do have bigger tables to fit in, you know, 10 to, I want to say like 25 and whatnot. So, oh, and awesome. they get like six people, about six people gets a grill. Okay. okay. Yeah, every six people gets a grill. That makes sense. All right. So All right. Here we go. Thank you. You're Let's welcome. load the grill up and then we will dig into what we're cooking. Yeah. What would be next? So, obviously, we've gone through the non marinated yeah. meats. Marinated. And then All you right. showed us to cook garlic and kimchi on the grill. I yep. love that. We'll yeah. be forever doing that now. As you guys can see, the grill is not that dirty and it's not burnt, so we can go ahead and do the marinated. Um, so the next one would be marinated pork belly. Let's do go ahead and do the bulgogi. Bulgogi. So bulgogi, bulgogi means fire meat. Yes. Yeah. And you can't really say I try Korean food without trying the bulgogi. Bulgogi is all-time favorite the everywhere. In Korea, bulgogis are usually for the kids, but don't let that bother you at all because a lot of adults still love bulgogi. Um, I understand why it's for the kids, but it's funny I didn't know. Yeah, it was kind of the kid dish. Kids love we something won't judge sweet. You here, right? and, no, no, <laughs> definitely not. Yeah, I love bulgogi. I usually cook bulgogi all the time here. This is kaibi, marinated short ribs. And you want to make your money worth over here, this is what you want. This is the quality meat that we have. And as you can see, the marbling is different than um, like the brisket that we had earlier. So I think what we have on the grill right now is pretty much like, in my eyes, the top three. These would be my top three things. Oh yeah, definitely. Pork belly, bulgogi beef, and then the galbi ribs. Yep. And like I said before, just let the grill do yourself and just, you know, once in a while, just check. Uh, the meats, the other side, if it's cooked or not. Um, I usually, I highly recommend cook your meat like an outer layer, like crispy, and inside layer, moisty. Yeah, I think that's like the perfect balance in the meat, uh, in my personal opinion. How do we know if the grill is like the right temperature? Will the server take care of that? Yeah, or? usually okay. we let we make sure the servers take care of it. A lot of customers still like play with it or not, but I'm that person. Don't... If I see a button, I'm like, mm. yeah. I mean, if you can't tell by the fire how like big it gets and whatnot, you can definitely control it yourself. But it's just a lot of people don't know how to use it, right. and they put it all the way hot. And then once you start with the marinated ones, it burns a lot faster. Yes. We can already see all the different marinades and juices coming out of the meats, yeah. and the grill is getting a little bit messier. Yes. So uh, best recommendation is to just call your server out, and they will mm. uh, switch it off for you. What would you recommend for pork belly? Pork Dip belly, definitely pickle radish. Pickle and then radish. sauces? Sauces, uh, samjang. Samjang. Yeah. Can you see that? The perfect lettuce wrap. It's so good. I think one of the things I like about Korean barbecue too, mm -hmm. it's the different temperatures. Oh, Hot yeah. meat, cold salad, cold sauces, the mm -hmm. banchan. Yes. So interesting. Yeah, and a lot of people ask why do Koreans have all the side dishes in there? Because if you just go to the regular Korean uh, restaurant, they also have all the side dishes and whatnot. And a lot of people ask why is this necessary? And um, to give you guys a little, little bit of history lesson, <laughs> uh, back in the day in Korea, Dynasty, um, like the king used to have everything 
on the table. And after our dynasty, no more kings, just prime minister and whatnot. Um, when we started having the president, everybody just wanted to live like a king, eat like king, and just mm -hmm. eat good for a better community and for their child and whatnot. So we started having all the side dishes in a regular, like a home meals in every restaurant that you go to. Okay? Um, Koreans are picky eaters, not gonna lie. <laughs> so they always have to have as many as they can. Yeah. <laughs> and I do want to tell everybody how to eat the gaibi. There's two most popular ways. Okay. And one way is to just cut around the bone, just like that. Mm -hmm. And you can eat around the bone, which is the most popular way. But I saw a lot of customers like this way better. They just don't want to deal with the bone. So they just cut off the bone from the beginning and you can just cook the meat part. Now, this is a very convenient for a lot of people, uh, especially for the kids. They don't want to deal with the bone. They don't want to touch the bone. Um, so they would just prefer just the meat part. Okay, here we go. Time to dig in. Yep. So many choices. What are you going to put on yours? I think today I'm going to go with thin pork belly. Okay. Yeah. Like I say, I'm still onto the pork bellies. I'm going to do kind of a mashup. No, yeah. A brisket, spicy pork, some the galbi ribs. Put some of this tofu on here. And Brian, you said it this can come served with rice if you want to eat it traditionally like that. Oh, we bring the rice uh, from the beginning. Uh, today, I forgot. <laughs> and I'm going to do raw onions. But the way that I prefer Garlic. and the way that I'd highly recommend everyone kind of get started is to do it as lettuce wraps. Oh yeah, definitely. You can fit everything in there. And it's also nice because sitting in front of the hot grill and cooking gets a little warm. Oh yeah. So serving on a lettuce wrap. Mm -hmm. All right, well, thanks for your time today. All we right. kind of taught everybody how to eat Korean barbecue. Yep. Can't wait to return with all my friends and do this all over again and show them all the pro tips you taught us today. Oh yeah. I all can't right. wait to see all the new faces. <laughs> thanks for coming today. Cheers. Cheers. Food Bank of Oklahoma serves 53 counties in central and western Oklahoma. Give now at rfbo.org. <laughs>